Hello, hello. How are we doing, guys? Oh, it's Wednesday again, and it's almost halfway through May, and what the hell is time? <laughs> oh. few people here already. I did set it up early so that it would hopefully send out some notifications, but Lisa didn't get one, so I'm guessing it didn't work. Just cleaning my glasses, because I've got a big smear in the middle. Don't know why. Don't know how. Don't know when. Hey, Lace. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, uh, if you didn't get a notification, then the Rachel didn't get a notification. Hey Scraps! It's very, very dark blue. Very, like, inky black blue. I like it. Fantasied channeling my not so inner goth once more. I got bored. I know, I don't know, I'll dye my hair. I'm just giving it a second because a few people had trouble getting onto YouTube last week. I just had trouble getting onto YouTube as usual, so I think this must be a peak time. Annette, hi, Ashley, Rachel. Oh, that's cute. What is that? A little mango man. Hello. It's adorable. How are the squirrels? The squirrels are quiet. The squirrels have been quiet for a while. Do not, do not wake the squirrels. Shh. Shh. Okay. So today I have a plan. I know. I have a plan. I've been this week, well, since Friday, using the Hobonichi Weeks that Lali gave me. Thank you very much, Lali. It was a birthday present. It's very sweet of you. Um, he's waving. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> um, so it's chilly in my room today. It's warm outside. It's 20 degrees outside, but it's cold in my room because there's no, there's no sun in here. And I was sat outside earlier, so I'm feeling it. So, Lali gave me this for my birthday, and it's lovely, and it's awesome, thank you very much, etc. But I hate this colour. <laughs> this colour's got to go. Ugh. I'm so hard to please when it comes to planners, I'm basically black or nothing. or Black or navy blue or nothing, really. Hey Rish, I emailed you yesterday, have you seen it? There's no rush. Yes, this was a birthday present, and I've been using it up until now as my what I've read, what I've watched, little picture of the day kind of stuff, which was fun. And I've also been tracking my, well, if I can find it, health and fitness. So I was doing my steps, and uh, I had health. How many, how many hours sleep or I changed it eventually to what time I went to bed, what time I woke up because it was easier because my, my, my tracker doesn't track, only tracks the last sleep you had. And I have a ter terrible habit of waking up in the middle of the night because Miss Maddie needs to pee. Um, so I started tracking how many hours I'd slept instead, what time I went to bed and what time I woke up, heart rate, all that kind of stuff. Uh, my... Fucking hooray for the day. Oops, sorry, YouTube. Um, my home is where the heart is. Um, do one thing for the place that you love every day. Uh, <laughs> in a crazy effort to get myself to do some hoovering. Uh, a self-care thing every day and a me time thing every day. And then any notes 
of you know stuff and this was working really well until lockdown and now I just can't focus on this I just, I just time is elastic it's not wibbly wobbly timey wimey it's like woo you know like um January February March were about three years long each and then August and May been about a week <laughs> you know I have no concept of time whatsoever which is the reason I'm using this uh, anybody who's been anybody in my classes knows oh you replied already oh okay <laughs> I haven't had time to check my email yet not since this morning uh, thank you for that um, yeah I've not had much luck getting through April I did all right in March because I was already planned for March. April, eh. <laughs> I'm still trying to organise April, okay? It's May the 6th and I'm still trying to organise April. But May, I thought, you know what? I know what the problem is because I started using my little, my little passport book because I love my little passport book. Set up a bullet journal, ready to go, monthly calendar, Here's today. Let's deal with this. And I just couldn't. I had enough trouble. I, I edited the calendar three times before I got the dates right. And then I was like, how am I going to if I can't write the dates correctly in the planner in the calendar? How am I going to transfer them from there to two pages on when I need to know what today's date is? I, I'm not going to be able to do that. It's not going to happen. And so I went, hang on a minute, I haven't been using this for what I was using it for. I stopped doing it in the first week of April uh, because I've not been wearing my tracker because there's no point. It's just depressing knowing that I, I absolutely cannot get my steps in every day. <laughs> it's just not happening. Um, so I was like, you know what, let's just have one less thing to worry about. Let's go back to it when all this craziness is eased off a bit and just you know, start again from what I was doing in January. I can, I can do that. But I thought, well, I could do this. I could use this for this week. Now, I've been using, I was using this because I've got to do it the hard way first. I was using this in conjunction with my little book because I love my little book. You can go outside, go on. Good girl. I know I left the door open for you. You can go outside. It's fine. Um, I was using this in conjunction. So I had this open on my desk. And then I was using this to refer to the dates. And I was like, what the hell am I doing? Why don't I just use this? So my little passport is just my just my journal at the moment. I haven't taken my, my bullet journal out of it because I will use it for odd notes and things. But I'm just... I've just got my journal and my collage book in there at the moment and I'm going to be planning in this because I think I will do much better if I can see what day it is and I can see what day it, I'll be able to see what day it is by what's filled in that's the idea um, for those of you not familiar with the weeks, it's it's seven days on one side, equal sized, and grid on the other. Um, this is split. It's got three little dots, one and two. So you can split it into two or three or not split it at all or two and one and one and two or one and two or whatever you need. Anytime you need it, you can do that. Um, some people randomly split it up and just do their tasks in one of the boxes and then do other stuff and that's that's cool but that's not how I'm going to use it and then this side is this is six squares which is basically for me I use it as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday because I don't do any Sundays is a non-day lockdown, work, regular, holiday doesn't matter Sundays is a non-day uh, <laughs> I don't do Sundays. I don't plan anything Sundays. The most I ever do on a Sunday is call my mum back because I missed her on Saturday night. <laughs> That's the only thing I ever do on a Sunday. Um, 
so I thought I could use this for what I need to do and this should fit a week's worth of stuff so I mean I'll, I'll probably do a proper proper um, video on this when I've um, when I've got got everything transferred because I'm writing things in at the moment and I, I started writing things in and I was like oh no wait a minute that was for Tuesday not for Monday see that's and then I was like oh should I put lines here oh I don't really anyway but then I realized that there's already lines there there's heavier lines already I just got to pay attention to them <sighs> the trials and tribulations um but I thought if nothing else with this I could at least highlight the day to show what day I'm on or something <laughs> anything just anything to help me work out what flipping day it is even if all I do is take one of these use an orange one I suppose I could have used a green one to match but I don't want to use a green one what day is it today it's Wednesday now see today it took me three times to figure out what exactly was it was it Tuesday was it Thursday was it Wednesday what day was it yesterday was it Sunday I don't know <laughs> I know flipping idea <laughs> you know so I thought, well, if I do this every day, because I do use my planner every day, even on days where I'm not doing anything, I come into my planner and I write down not doing anything today, or I write down what I've done retrospectively or something. Uh, because I just, I can't follow the days when there is no day. Usually I work according to what other people's days are doing. Does that make sense? Hi Jane, Paula, Tanette, Ash, Cody. Um, yeah, normally, depending on what other people are doing, I know what day it is. So if Paul upstairs gets up really early and puts the bin out, I know it's Wednesday. If he gets up really early and just leaves the house, I know it's Monday or Tuesday. Thursday or Friday. If he gets up and starts hoovering, it's Saturday. If I don't hear him at all, it's Sunday. So I know what day of the week it is. But he's working irregular hours because he's a key worker. He's a delivery driver. So he's in and out all the time at crazy hour times of the day. And sometimes three or four times a day, he does split shifts and all sorts. Um, so I've got no way of tracking what day it is. My neighbour next door isn't home very much. She's working from home two days a week, which means she's working up at her mother-in-law's. And then the rest of the week, she just comes home and feed the cat to feed the cat, and she does that whenever she's got time. So it's it's a bit crazy. Hey, Wendy. Um, I can't even go by the noise from the school because there's no noise from the school. <laughs> so something had to go. And trying to figure out what day it is and what what I'm supposed to be doing today and am I prepared for tomorrow? I don't know what today is, so how do I know what tomorrow is? And so on was stressing me out so much. I just I was like, no, this is ridiculous. Why am I not just using this? Even if I only use it for May, that's that's okay. You know, that's okay. I can I'm not using it for what I intended to use it for at the moment. So I might as well use it for May, go back and organise April because I didn't use it for that either. And then, you know, I'll just use it for however long until I start using it for my fitness again. Because as soon as all this craziness ends, I'm going back to my, to putting my tracker on and getting my steps a day up again. Because, man, I walked up the shop, it's about 250 yards. I ran out of essentials like bread and margarine and things like that. So when I'd run out of absolutely everything that I really needed, I went up the shop. For the first time leaving the house since March the 14th. Yes, March the 14th. I was so tired when I got back. I can't believe how hard it was to walk up the shop and walk back again. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so 
so tired. I'm so unfit. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just I'm just letting it slide. I'm like I don't care. I'm just going to start again. You know, J January. I started well in January when I got my my tracker. I was doing great. But I just, you know, I don't have the kind of room that my mum has. Like, my mum's still using hers because they have a massive garden. So her and my dad go for a walk around the garden three times a day. Three times a day, three times around the garden, rain or shine, off they go. Because my dad built a paving all the way around the garden. So they could literally walk all the way around without getting muddy. I don't have that kind of luxury. <laughs> So, yeah. Anyway, like I said, I'll, pr I'll probably, once I've got this set up, I'll do a proper show and tell of how I've got it set up, how I'm using it, how, what's working, what isn't, and so on. Because, guys, it's it's like 50, 51 days or something to One Book July. This year's One Book July might be... What the hell is a planner again? <laughs> How to get back into using a planner when you've been sat at home watching Netflix for three months. You know, could be. We don't know yet. We don't know what we're doing yet. We're, we're waiting until nearer the time this year. Usually we've got it all planned out in advance. This year, I think we're pretty much going to make a decision on the 28th of June and then go and do our videos. <laughs> Anyway, the point of today is I don't like this cover. I could live with the colour if I could stand the texture, but I can't stand the texture. It makes my, it's, it's that canvas that's just very slightly fuzzy. And I have issues with things that are just very slightly fuzzy. I don't mind if it's proper fuzzy, like suede. Suede is beautiful. Fur is beautiful. Brushed cotton is beautiful. The canvas that is very slightly fuzzy or paper that is very slightly fuzzy. It sets my teeth on edge. I cannot stand it. So I have some of this left. And look, that looks about the right size. So I was thinking, how about I do a cover for this? You're looking forward to One Book July. You might even film a video. Woohoo! I want to do One Book July. I think yeah I think it's going to go one of two ways it's either going to be planner basics 101 OG one book July just find a planner and try and remember how to use it or it might be um something somebody suggested something like something journaling based rather than planner based uh, because a lot of people who plan are also journalers and a lot of the people who do One Book July are journalers and, you know, or they combi. So, you know. A clear plastic cover. Yeah, I didn't want to. I, I did look, uh, but I couldn't find one that didn't come from China. And I have no no problem. Don't 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 email me. <laughs> As they say, I have no problem with things coming from China. I quite often order direct from the people who make the stuff uh, instead of bumping up some random company's profits. But at the moment, there's not a whole lot of stuff shipping from either China or Japan. Uh, and what is coming is coming by sea rather than by air. So it would be like, you know, we could be in next year before it gets here. <laughs> hey, Amber. So I do have some, what are they called? Hobonichi plastic covers for the big Hobonichi, which I could doctor to turn into something. Um, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't, there's something about my Hobonichi covers because they fit my A5 books. I don't really want to, I don't want to mess with them because the ones that I've got are all limited edition ones and I don't want to, if I could replace them or I could get another one, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd just go for it. But 
I actually really like using them on my existing books. So, but I thought there's got to be a way to do this with this. Maybe I can make a slip cover or something. I've done that before. Um, and then it will match. See, here's the other one. It'll match my Delphonics dupe. Right? That's what I'm thinking. It'll match my Delphonics dupe. So, my, my Delphonics are widthways, but I'm thinking this might be better lengthways because then I can just chop off this bit and I can just use that bit rather than having a load of having to cut into this but if I cut that off well let's start there shall we because either way I'm going to be using this bit of fabric aren't I because I don't want to I don't want to chop into the rest of it because this is a nice square piece at the other end this bit is a nice square chunk what I can do something with. Delphonic dupe, yes, we got there eventually. But then, of course, if I do it that way, it probably fit that way anyway. Hmm. But, I don't know, I kind of like it that way. I don't want it to get lost in my bags, and my bags are all that way. So I think maybe do it this way. And then if I do it there and leave it on that seam, it's already pre-folded. I've got plenty here to play with and it'll have a black spine, which will make me so happy. So I'm thinking, let's chop this off to, I don't know how much I'm going to need, so I'm going to chop it to an inch too big at the top and bottom, which would be more than enough. And then I might be able to do something with that to make like a pen holder or something. Ooh. Maddie, stop snorting. You're gross. Okay, so. Let's get a... I need a... I need a... I need a... Thingy thingy. I need a thingy thingy. Where? Is the thingy thingy? Oh, come on. Seriously? Where is it? <sighs> okay, well, never mind. Plan B. I'm gonna have to deal with this flapping around because I can't see any of my. Oh! Did I put them in here? Did I go? Hang on a minute. I'll put them in there so I know where they are. I did. Ha ha. -ha. Hey, Burgess. Amber. Okay. So if I put that on there, that will stop that flapping around in the wind. So I've only got the covers to deal with. Because there's... I love this paper, but man, does it ever crinkle. Okay, so if I do it like that, on that bend, it's already folded so that it's got a black outside, which I love that. All right, what do I need to do? Let me think. You're so gross and disgusting. What noises are you making? Ugh. I can't fold it down that way because I won't have anything on the spine there I'll have a raw edge on the spine so therefore I need to whatever I'm going to do I need to fold it down first so that this lines up with that so the first thing I need to do is hem this top and bottom so it's the exact same size as my book marvellous 
let's get a ruler that has lines on it so we can actually line it up straight with the oldie ye oldie lines like that I need a good bit longer so let's do it that way around a bit longer again uh, let's try no, I know I know I know don't tell me the answer don't tell me the answer I can do it <laughs> let's do that and then move it down to about there line up the what I need is the right angle that's what we need is a gosh darn right angle so if I line this up with one of these here stripes like that then I can line this up with the edge of that ruler and then that is straight oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm good. okay I don't have anything to hand to do this with so I'm just gonna use my pen. That is, I'm thinking if I fold it over and stitch it, then I can chop this bit off and check exactly how high it is and then do the other side. That could work, right? So let's fold this up. For those of you who have not tuned in before or who are just tuning in, hi, I'm Romany. I have no idea what I'm doing. I just like to play. Patterns, schmattens, I say. I like to work things out as I go along. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Tune in in about two and a half hours to find out the results. <coughs> so I'm just giving that a bit of a crease along there so I know where to fold it and then it's just a case of finger pressing it this is um, heavy cotton canvas no medium weight cotton canvas not heavy cotton canvas so it's pretty easy to just do that excellent okay now I currently have a weird color put purple in there I don't think I want purple let's do let's just do white for now I'm going to add some fun stitching later if I want to but let's just just use white for now for the moment Okay, chat amongst yourselves while I try and get this thing out again. Where's my crochet hook? I make it up as I go. My other soapbox, yeah. Just make it up as you go along. I like the challenge of figuring it out. There's a reason House 5 in astrology is both creativity and problem solving. Because in order to solve problems effectively, you have to be creative. And in order to be effectively creative, you have to be able to solve problems. <sighs> okay, so it goes that way and, and that way. Okay, so that way and then that way. And then we do the old one, two. Never figure out how whoever figured out how to make that loop round and get a knot and effectively make two bits of thread go like this and then mix together somehow. 
genius, man. I'm telling you. Genius. Who invented the sewing machine? That person needs a pat on the back. Because that's some engineering right there. There we go. Let's have a straight stitch. Uh, let's do a close to the edge straight stitch, number seven. And somewhere here I should have some pins. Somewhere in my box here I should have some pins. I don't have any pins in my box. Oh, my pins. Oh. In my... Whoops. Craft lunch. Yeah, I didn't tidy up that side of my desk, did I? Probably a woman who was going to murder someone the next time she had to hand sew a shirt. Hand sewing's quite therapeutic. I think it's more likely some bloke who went, you know what, if we could do this a lot faster, we could make some more money. I don't know why he'd have a northern accent, I just, just seemed like he might. <laughs> find my pins. This could be interesting. Oh, are they under there somewhere? Oh, there! You'd never know I had glasses on. All the pins. when you have to outfit your husband and nine kids with entirely hand sewn wardrobe. Yeah, but if you hand sew stuff, you make it to last, don't you? Okay. So I'm going to pin this bit up here a bit. Really, really high up. Like that. And I don't know how wide I need it to be, but I know that this is plenty wide enough. So I'm just going to sew the whole thing all the way along. If I can remember how to use my sewing machine. Let's see, shall we? Hopefully this won't be horrendously loud. Oh, I think it needs to be a bit closer. Maybe I'll use the middle one. Uh, yeah, that's better. Oops. Lupus not, not this early in the day. Okay. Switch it on and crush fingers. Crush your crush fingers there. Yes, I'm a slow sewer. Because you know what? If I go slowly, I can do it in a straight line. Full moon tomorrow for anyone that needs a reminder. Oof. It's full moon in Scorpio during a Pluto retrograde. I don't recommend doing any moon work. I mean, <laughs> like maybe clench crystals. But only your black ones. <laughs> Quiet 
this machine is. I've been using my other one over on the other desk. Oh, I didn't not the other end. Do that by hand now just so I've got a, a knotted end. Uh, that's all sewing machine needles. I don't have a sewing needle in front of me because my box is over there. You know what? I can I can live without. I can just crochet hook when in doubt it'll do so let's pop that through there pull this through here whoops almost put it back again have to do it again there we go and they're both on the same side we can just tie a knot do the job. Alrighty then. I seriously need a, need a pin cushion. There's an adorable, adorable little hedgehog one on Amazon, and I, I need, I need, he's calling to me. I do need a pin cushion. I could make a pin cushion technically, but I've had issues before where I've made pin cushions and the stuff that I put inside it caused the pins to rust. So I think it's better to just buy one in this instance. Okay, so now I need to know the exact measurement of Ye Olde Hobonichi. Exact, not, oh, let's guess it's about this long exact so uh, my numbers are all missing at the end here and I can't even see where the numbers where the first number is so I always start at 10 which is why I'm middle me I'm measuring in the middle of the ruler okay let's line it up against the crease and 10 and it is exactly 28.7 millimeters Let's make it 28 millimetres, just, just, a thing. a millimetre's not going to kill anybody. Let's just do a, a, an extra one. Must turn the machine off, otherwise Maddie will do stuff. Okay, so 20, what did we say? 28. 28 point. Oh, there's no halfway on these. Five. Well, I can see. I can see. Uh, oh, 29. Nine. Eight. There we go. Nine. Eight. One. Two, three. Okay. Let's do one in the middle, just for luck. One, two, one, three. Seven and a smidge. Ten. Okay. So in theory, this should be a straight line, right? From there. Well, three dots is always going to be a straight line, pretty much.
I gave it a little extra millimetre just to account for the folding over. In case you were wondering. Because once you actually fold this, you can't really tell if it's going to be straight anymore. You can only fold it and hope. Question, why didn't astrology predict the COVID pandemic? Uh, astrology did. Astrologers didn't. Oh, except for... In my class, on January the 4th, when we were looking at the year of astrology, and I said something along the lines of Saturn in Aquarius, <laughs> community, Pluto, everything changes, <laughs> Jupiter in Capricorn, big changes, global scale, Pluto to do with dark stuff like sickness and things and I jokingly said yeah we'll probably have a global pandemic or something so I didn't actually predict it but I kind of also did <laughs> I saw the signs and I went hmm that looks like the kind of thing that happens when you have you know like a plague <laughs> and everybody suddenly has to stay at home I mean Saturn in Aquarius complete change of the way you work in a non-traditional way that maximizes technology and community is to do with it well we can't be out in the community and we're having to use technology in order to completely change the way we work pluto retrograde lots of shadow stuff coming up lots of people having to deal with lots of dark stuff because they're now left to their own devices and when you are left to your own devices and don't have being productive to keep you busy what happens hmm. all that stuff you've been ignoring by being too busy bubbles up to the surface and uh, jupiter on a grand scale <laughs> in capricorn what even is traditionalism? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I saw a couple of astrologers who said that something major was going to happen with this conjunction. I didn't see anyone else that specifically said to do with changes to our community and the way we perceive community and the way we work. Because it's Saturn Capricorn. Capricorn is all about work. Capricorns are only happy when they're working. They don't care what anybody else is doing, but if they can work, they're happy. So Pluto and Jupiter together all change in a major way. Had to be to do with changes to the way you work. Saturn was also in Capricorn and then went into Aquarius, starting the rebellion complete change to how you perceive technology isn't it funny how all these people who poo-pooed twitter for the last 15 years are suddenly on there going how many characters do we have to type suddenly all these people who couldn't turn on a microwave can now use zoom because they have to you know? social media people are relying on social media I didn't exactly predict it, okay? I just made a throwaway comment that happened to be absolutely spot on based on what I was seeing. I'm thinking that's more of less, less scientifically or pseudo-scientifically, if you prefer the term, based astrology, based on astrological techniques and more just based on me make an intuitive leap from one plus one equals oh, look, we're going to have a, a global
global pandemic, you know. But yeah. Oh, Cody. Cody, have you seen how many retrogrades are happening right now? Pluto, Jupiter, Pluto is already retrograde. This month, Saturn, Jupiter and Venus go retrograde consecutively three days after, one day after another. In class, you said about the rationing, yes. I think between us we nailed it actually because I I said what I thought the signs were interpreting or what could happen um, and you were spot on about how it was going to affect everybody because you were talking about wartime rationing and people being at home well this is the biggest thing since the second world war with rationing and people being at home <laughs> So between us, we nailed it. Your sister's trying to teach your grandfather how to use his use Skype on his iPad. Good luck with that. <laughs> okay. That's not the not the end of this that I didn't do. Which one is the one that's backstitched? That's backstitched. So this one needs knotting. Oh, I thought I'd knotted it on the wrong side for a minute on the other one but no I did it on the right side yeah the astrology stuff I do is in the one dollar tier over on patreon um, but it's also part of the full class but once a month we do a here's what's going crazy this month chat which is tomorrow I was originally going to just do it on YouTube but I can't I can't deal with all the nutters my channel is nutter free and I'd like you to like it to stay that way apart from the, the crazy doll lady who pops up every so often I don't have any crazy nutters on my channel coming to tell me how I'm going to hell or whatever I don't I don't need that kind of stress in my life so I just do it on my one dollar patreon stuff how's my gaming going my gaming is going very well oh hi Zen I didn't see you come in my gaming is going very well let me figure out what I'm going to do with this now and I'll fill you in so hopefully this is the right size. Damn, I'm good. Damn, like damn. Yes way. Now the question is, do I want to put an inside on it or do I just want to make it a strap on cover and be done with it I'm thinking what I should have done is made this made this seam the edge so that I could then go back in and sew it because I've got no uh, I've got no end to sew now have I having measured all that out very carefully I've got no end to sew 
Mm. On the 9th of January, you said, passion projects only, everything will grind to a halt. Look at 2020, previous centuries, 20s had plagues, flus and choleras. Be conscious, repair, revise, recycle and promote. That is correct. That is what I said. I was kind of joking when I said absolutely every 20s has had a global pandemic. Major plagues, flus, choleras, etc. All highly contagious viruses where millions of people die. <laughs> um, but also wasn't really joking because, you know, after the ninth one, you kind of have to think, well, surely we should take a hint and be prepared. <laughs> Just, just in case. You're allowed to meet four other people, but only those four other people. Four other people at once, or four other people... You're only allowed four other people in your social group. You can have a social group of five that hangs out together. Five is an odd number. You'd think they'd make it six. Because that's three couples then, isn't it? Which is a... Not that's that's generally a kind of if you're having a get together, it generally is either two couples and a single or three couples. Five is an odd number, anyway. Okay, so now I've done this, what, what the hell am I going to do next? That's the question. If all else fails, I can put elastic on, so I'm not overly worried. And I know that's going to be the centre because I want that black bit to be on the spine. I'm more thinking, how do I want the book to fit? Do I want it to stay on the book and just cover it and be done with it? Or do I want to just make a cover I can take off? I suppose if I'm going to make the effort of making a cover, I'd rather have a cover I can take off. Because then if I ever get another Hope Me Two Weeks, I can reuse my cover. That's what I'm thinking. So. That is the exact halfway point. So that is going to be the one. Yeah, the one where it's already folded. So I'm just going to do on this bit, because I'm going to cut this off anyway. I'm just going to put a couple of crisscrosses on the inside flap because that's going to get cut off because it's way too it's way too long and bulky. So I just want to make sure I know exactly where the middle point is so that I always work from the middle out. Um, and let's do a line. down the middle there so I can measure from it. I don't normally measure stuff but this is such a tight fitting cover that I think it's it's more sensible. Because I know this is absolutely square because I used a square to do it, I can now run this along the edge and know that that is absolutely parallel take it off and use it later yeah I like to reuse and I think if you're going to make something that's handcrafted you might as well put a bit of time off put a bit of time into it and effort to make it reusable so the next question is how do I want to do that let's put my book right slap bang in the middle there and figure out exactly where that edge is. So this is going to be a bit tricky. I'm going to need a, an extra hand. So if anybody could just grab that bit there. So it's going to be exactly halfway through this so one, two, three, four, fifth black stripe. Okay. So it's going to be 
exactly I'm using the stripes to line it up exactly there now the only problem is that I didn't leave enough I'm just wondering if I should actually just unpick one of these and move it out a bit so that it's because really this seam should be the top and bottom of the journal so that I can slip it in otherwise I've got to finagle stuff What to do, what to do. Let me think. Because I'm also trying to decide if I actually want to turn it into a, a complete, so when you take it off the book, it actually looks like a complete finished thing, as opposed to just this. So I'm wondering if I should get another piece of fabric. In which case, I could make the other piece of fabric come out a little bit and have some bordering on it but that might look messy. No, you know what? It's going to bug me. I'm going to have to take it out. It's going to annoy me. So I'm going to take it out. I'm going to remeasure it. because I might as well. Ooh, can I grab hold of that? Oh, come on. Doesn't want to work. Don't think there's enough grip on those. Oh well. I don't have a seam ripper, so well, I do have a seam ripper. I don't know where it is. I have a vague idea. But hey, as my mum would say, you know what? You know what? So what unpicking seams means? Well, you know what unpicking seams teaches you? Maddie. You can go out in the garden, it's okay. Go on. What does unpicking seams teach you? Do it nice or do it twice. As your grandpa used to say, oh my god. That's a good one actually. What unpicking seams teaches you is to do it right the first time. Measure twice, cut once. Wax on, wax off, etc, etc. Oh, gaming. Yes, how is my gaming going? My gaming is going very well. I am currently level 62 on Animal Crossing Pocket Camp because I'm addicted. I love it. I can't get enough even though it's just going in and pressing a few buttons every day. I I have to go in and see all my friends. Not you lot, like my friends in my house. I've got the I've got the weird sisters living in my house. I've got all three of the sheep girls. I don't have Fritter. I've just heard about Fritter. I don't know if she's in the pocket game. But I have Vesta Muffy, who is basically me in sheep form. She's awesome. I love her. She's like a, she calls everybody nightshade and she's like an old goth. <laughs> Back in her younger days, she used to ride a motorbike and stay up till all hours. And she says things like, oh, you're still up at this hour. 
gosh, I thought you'd be in bed by now. Actually, it's probably too late to go to bed now. We might as well just stay up and drink tea. <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's basically me. <laughs> um, yeah, so they've got the weird sisters living in the cabin with me, with my, my Goldie, who is... Um, my friend has the full game and Muffy was the first one on her island. And she treats her like she treats me. She says, I, I basically just pretend it's you in the game. So she's made her an art easel and she's got a crafting table. <laughs> she bought her a motorbike. <laughs> she gave her a witch's hat. <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> um, and then I, I just met Pedro the other day, who is... A sheep dressed up as a clown. So I can only assume he's the odd cousin that nobody talks about. <laughs> um, Wendy and Stella. Oh, yeah, the four sisters. Wendy, Stella, Muffy and Vesta. But I don't have Fritta yet. I've just heard about Fritta and I don't know if she's in the pocket camp game. Vesta, Wendy and Muffy. Yeah, there's um, Stella is pink. Well, she's kind of purpley pink. She's like grape coloured. Um, and they're all a bit odd. <laughs> and they've all got different hobbies. One's a knitter. Stella's a knitter. She knitted the ugly sweater that I started out with. Um, Muffy likes to sing. She used to be in a band. And her boyfriend had a motorbike. Um, Vesta is a seamstress. She owns all the cool crafting stuff. And I think Fritta is a writer from what my friend said about her. She doesn't really know a lot about her yet, but. <sighs> so, yeah, pocket camp. That keeps me. It's just something nice and relaxing to play once or twice a day, three times a day. I basically do it while I'm having my coffee first thing in the morning and playing with the dogs. Just before I go to bed at night, I sit and chill with it because I like the music. Um, and usually when I'm having my lunch or my dinner, I'll sit and play on it as well while I'm eating. Uh, Enclave, finished that. That was easy. It was easy once I got a mouse. <laughs> I, bought, I had to buy a new mouse. <laughs> because you can't game on a trackpad, guys. You just can't. Um, so yeah that got a lot easier once I could press and hold the mouse button to move about uh, and since then I've been basically been playing Diablo 2 Muffy also says we keep running into each other isn't this island big enough for both of us yes which is one of my favourite sayings Um, 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 Diablo 2. Diablo 2, right. I'm playing on a Mac, and the only problem with playing on a Mac, there's there's no real issue with playing on a Mac if you like the original game. However, being a, a beta tester and everything else and making my own computers and playing game stuff a very long time, I was one of the people who got into the Pugly thing way back when it was first introduced. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was useful. It made some improvements to the game. Some of the improvements I thought were a bit cheaty. Others, like the larger boxes, the larger bags, so you don't have to keep going into town every 12 seconds uh, or doing three trips to town after you kill a boss because you can't carry all his stuff back to town to sell uh, and the mini maps which that's the biggest one the mini map because the overlay map is really hard to see what you're doing and it's also really hard to read the map 
and you can fade the map but if you do that basically the crosses for your party you can't see which isn't very much use if you're a necromancer because generally you're a party of at least seven so that's a bit of an issue so what i've done is i found my netbook yesterday which still works uh, but i can't find the charger so i've ordered another charger which cost me a whopping four pounds that will be here Friday and then hopefully I can install the game on that because there's I can't find any way to install the Pugly thing on my Mac. I've gone through all the different permutations, I've gone through all the different, you know, I try, I, he says it works on 1.14, it doesn't, so I went to 1.13, did the workaround and I installed Wine and everything else and, you know, I'm a Unix girl so I know what I'm doing but I can't get it to work. And I'm it, it, it's supposed to be fun and it's not fun because I'm just getting frustrated with the amount of trips to town I have to do. So I figured it was worth spending a couple of quid on a charger so I can use my netbook which will run Diablo 2 just as well and then I can use the app use the mod and just play and let's not forget auto loot with all those flipping piles of gold coins like why do you have to have 200 different piles of coins of less than 100 coins each why can't you just put it in like three piles of 2000 would that not be easier? Or just, you know, when you open a chest, it goes, oh, you found 427 gold. No, it's got to come out in little ching, 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 ching. I spent 10 minutes the other day clearing up three rooms of gold to pick up 3,000 gold in, like, low denominational bills, basically. It's like asking for a ransom in dollars all in dollar bills untraceable unmarked and all that stuff it's ridiculous so auto loot will be very useful even though i'm only playing on my own so i think my i think my necromancer is level 17 now i couldn't find my save files to use my old character so I had to recreate him from scratch so he's on we've done Luke Galeen we've got to Luke Galeen which is act two and we've started I think we've done the first quest and we're halfway through the second you're reading the Discovery of Witches series. I started reading that and I enjoyed the first... The first book was okay. It was a bit twilighty for me. Um, the second book was brilliant. The third book, I was like... And we're done. <laughs> no, the first one was basically Twilight for grown-ups. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you read the second book, the second book is fantastic. The introduction of the aunts and the other witches and all that, brilliant. I absolutely loved the second book. And then I started the third book and I pretty much fell asleep before I even got past chapter two. I was like, maybe not. <laughs> okay, so let's reconvene. So this time I'm going to measure it, I'm going to give it a little bit of leeway and I'm going to measure it inside that line there so I basically need it to come up to about there Which is nice and easy when you've got a quilting ruler because all you've got to do is pick the nearest square to add on. 
So if I do it about, oh, let's turn it that way and then I can see what I'm doing. So if that's the line, yep, if I add it onto there, that will be about the right size. In fact, it will be exactly the right size. Okay, so I've got to re, re um, fold it along that second line now. Move it up just a tiny bit so that I've got enough room to fold. And repeat. It's worth doing it again because it will now fit properly. So let's just double check again. There's the, the line there. No, nope, I've done it again. Look, it's still not right. I need to, because you're folding it over, you've got to add double. You gotta add double. You need twice as much if you're gonna fold it in half. I should have known this, but I don't do math. I'm a poet and didn't know it. It's just a shame I can't sing. Okay, here we go. The show. I haven't watched the show, but it's uh, it's got Alex Kingston in it, hasn't it? Alex Kingston is Aunt Sarah. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. She was. I liked Sarah. I thought she was a really good character. And I liked the Dark Witch. The first one she meets. Can't remember her name. Sasha, is it? No. The one who imprisoned. I'm not saying any more because of spoilers. The one who did some imprisoning in book two. Yes, her. I really liked her. I thought she was an awesome character. The character development is really good. The issue I have with the books is that it's very heavily, or too heavily, centred around the... Yes, the Swedish witch. She was awesome. Um, it's a bit too heavily centred around, oh, he's a vampire and I'm so in love with him. You know, and I'm like, haven't we done this story already? Can we not do it again, please? Especially in the first book, there was far too much of that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against a bit of romance, you know, but at the time that that came out, it was all Twilight and Outlander, and it was like, oh, here's, here's the book you get if Twilight and Outlander have a baby. Nick Cake, hello. But yeah, I, enjoy, I thoroughly enjoyed the second book, and I quite liked his mum, actually. I thought she was a character. <laughs> she, she reminded me of, um, what's her name from Down, Downton Abbey? <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Oh, no, let's measure it again first. To make sure this time. So that's going to go there and that's going to go there and it's going to have a bit of a gap on either end. Yes, perfect. That's what we need. I think I might have to pin this down again. I'd rather sew it without pins, but I think it needs it. Just to hold it in place there and there. pretty easy to sew it because it's in lines but never hurts to put a pin in it does it I really like I really love the story around the lovey parts yes the actual story itself is fantastic how it works and all the like all these different people who were after the manuscript and wasn't there that one bloke who really reminded me of um Oh, what's his name? Leslie. Uh, Leslie. Actor. Old. 60s. White hair. Gay. 
American Horror Story. Leslie, oh, can't remember his name. Can't remember. He's fa fabulous, darling. He's fabulous. Um, he reminded me of the guy, the old guy in the library. That's who I pictured for that part. His mum is the astronaut in Water of Mars. Yeah, there's a lot of people from um, that particular series of Doctor Who that are in the, the TV thing, isn't it? Netflix. I think that's why I haven't seen it because I don't have a Netflix at the moment. I switch between Netflix and Amazon and at the moment I'm busy watching Amazon. Uh, there's there's two new seasons of Joe Kender on crime thing. Ah oh, too late I've already done it. Leslie Jordan that's his name. I was going to say Jones, and I was like, no, that's not right. It's not Leslie Jones. Yeah, Leslie Jordan. I follow him on Instagram. He's been doing daily videos during lockdown. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. He's literally going crazy in quarantine. <laughs> And I love, I love the way he's such a southern belle. <laughs> what was he said the other day? I can't do his accent justice, but it was just the way he said it. I fell out the womb and I landed in my mama's high heels. <laughs> I was crying. He's so funny. Sundance. Yeah, in the UK it might be on something different though. You can never tell what it's going to be on over here because it depends who pays the most money I think. Which is usually Sky and then everybody else gets it two years later. He was in Sex and the City, yeah. He's been in loads of things and he's got a new he's got a new series coming out. He's just been booked for another new series coming out. Kit Cat something. I can't remember what it's called. He literally just announced it the other day that he'd got the call. But he hadn't signed the contract at the time, so he said he couldn't he couldn't tell us what it was because he hadn't signed the contracts because they hadn't arrived. So But then he'd signed the contract, so he told us what it was. He's got, yeah, he's got another main character part. He should do stand-up. He's hilarious. Just listening to him talk. Will and Grace! Yes! I could listen, I could just sit and listen to him chatting all day. He could talk about absolutely anything. Just listening him to him telling his stories. He must have some hilarious stories from over the years being in Hollywood. And it, he's just, he's just a natural with his humour. He's a naturally funny man. He doesn't have to try. And I like that kind of humour. I don't, I don't enjoy humour that's kind of staged humour. Okay, so now I've got enough seam width to sew back along these seams and it will fit. <laughs> Oof, that was a chore and a half, but I'm glad we've done it because now it fits properly. So, I want to make it so it's reusable. So I think what I'm going to do is 
hem that and do that so it's a slip cover. And then this is basically going to be the same because this is the same width so that makes that nice and easy. So again halfway will be just the right size. But I saw one, I don't remember who it was made by. Oh, I don't even remember who posted it. I know it's a gorgeous one with a tarot card on the front and it looks amazing. Um, but other than that, <laughs> what she did was she made this a slip piece. So it slides into here and then this is a loose cover that covers over and I, th I don't know if it has a closure or whatever but this is a closure like that Karen Walker smells like gin yeah <laughs> he makes me laugh till my sides ache and there is very few people in the world who can do that. <sighs> okay. Do I want it nice and flat so it just slides in like that? Slides in, ba-dum ba-dum, ba-dum ching, job done. Open up my journal. Here's my planner, like that. Or, contrary-wise, do I want to be able to make use of this bit and put a pocket or something here, or I could do both, or just have this, this could be a stiff cover, you see. No, I think I'd, let's just do the easy way. Just do it the easy way, okay? First off, we're going to have to trim this down because this is far too thick. So... I'm basically trying to trim as much of this off as possible without actually cutting into the stitching in any way. It's easier said than done. These scissors are so big and my little gnome hands are so small and budgy. Now, if I'm going to make a pen pocket, I need to make sure that I sew that on before I close up the front. No one can ever have enough pockets. Absolutely. Lady True North! Haven't seen you for a while. West Jean. Haven't seen East Jean for a while either. The black and white stripes are very beetle juice. Oh. 
Okay, now I'm going to fold it down there. And I've got plenty of fabric, so I'm just going to fold it so the black meets the black. I'll have white on the edges, that'll be okay. Will it? Will it? Yes, because it's on the inside. There we go. Come here. This is why I need a pin cushion. Okay. And that side there. Come on, go through. Yep, like so. Trim the bulky bits off. If I did that with all my pins, it would make more sense, wouldn't it? This is the problem being left-handed. You do everything backwards. All righty. Don't forget to sew back across the edge. Ugh. Don't forget to sew the end. Don't forget to sew the end. Do not forget to sew the end. Do not forget to sew the end. Make sure you sew the end. Oh, accidentally touching my my mouse there, whoops. Go back and do it again. There we go, now we've got both ends done. to be in straight. Good job that's going to be on the inside. You don't normally catch me due to the time difference. Well this is the time I'm normally on. with a, a crochet hook than it is to use a, a sewing needle actually which is weird 
she says. I'm not doing it properly. Oh, it was going through two areas, two layers. Stupid thing. Come on. Do it. Do it. So in live on video, your language would be blue. <laughs> well, it did, did you watch the one where I made my Delphonics pouch? <laughs> we were quite colourful in that one. I have to be, I have to be very careful because I get demonetised on YouTube these days if I swear. <laughs> Oh, just in case you were wondering, we don't have music today because I keep getting copyright strikes against me from the publishing company because something's gone wrong with the, I don't know, it's it's picking it up as copyright when I've got permission to use it. So Katie's sorting it. But for today, I didn't put music on because I don't want to get too many copyright strikes because you get enough copyright strikes, they just like delete your channel. And your copyright strikes don't go away, even if you then dispute it and you have permission, they don't retract them. Once you get a copyright strike, that's it. It's there, even if you're innocent, which is ridiculous, but that's the system. I guess they want to encourage people not to have copyright strikes in the first place and take a bit more care about what they're doing. But if you're innocent, you know... Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. So this is going to be on there like that. Line the stripes up. There's the, oh, there we go, line the stripes up. So this needs to be folded in. If I was doing this with thinner material, I probably actually would get my quilting sewing thing out and heat it to put the creases in. But because this is quite heavy canvas, it creases really easily. I mean, there's already a, there's already a crease there. I don't even really need to crease it any further. So I don't really need to worry about it. Okay. So I've got my 90 needle in, so that should be okay sewing through four of those. And I've just got to sew along that, that edge again. There. And there. And I think I'm going to cut that thick bit off again did last time because I think that worked well. <sighs> okay. Don't forget to knot it. Don't forget to knot it. Don't forget to knot it. Knot down. Cut all the stitches. Reverse it. Follow the line. Follow the line. And reverse. And go. Do, 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 do. I don't mind getting a copyright strike. I understand they have to do this. I don't mind them. Like has happened, you know. Here's a copyright strike. This company is claiming copyright. That's fine. That lets me know there's a problem. So I disputed it. Said I've got permission. Here's the information. I contacted Katie. She's contacting them her end 
to make sure they do it. But once that's resolved, that should be removed from your record. They claimed a copyright that they shouldn't have. So that's on them. But it lets you know that there's a problem. But once you've been proved that actually I've already got permission to use this and they say, yes, that's fine. She does have permission to use it. And this is an error on our part. That should be removed. You should no longer be held accountable by all means, you know, keep a record of the claim. You know, X many claims. If it if it was on your account as like. 17 claims, zero upheld or one upheld, then that would be fine. I wouldn't have a problem with that. But the whole three strikes and you're out and you can get a claim, you can get a copyright claim against you, even if you're in the right, that's not on. That's no. No. -uh. No. -uh, Skippy. <laughs> If you've told me I can use your music, then I can use your music and that's the end of it. <laughs> and if your algorithm doesn't pick up that it's me and that you've given me permission, then you need to fix it. That's not my fault. But thank you for letting me know there was a problem so I can get it addressed, you know. But if you're in the right, you shouldn't still have that copyright claim. But they kind of treat it like, well, you've had three suspect copyright claims, so therefore we can't trust you anymore. Like, no, <laughs> that's not how it works. So, yeah, I'm up to six on four different videos. <laughs> so, I'm like, yeah, I don't want any more of these. Thank you. Also, they're taking my money. <laughs> None of my videos are monetized right now that have got that music on. So all of those, like one of them's got 300 odd views. None of those views have been monetized, or at least I'm not getting any of the money that's been monetized. Because they don't backdate it. So I've lost all that revenue through no fault of mine. And it don't, it's not Katie's fault either. It's not really TuneCore's fault either. It's just a, a flaw in the system that, oops, you're, you have permission to use that and it's not acknowledging you have permission to do that. Sorry, let's fix it. You know, the system is bugged. But then you get treated like it's your fault anyway. And I've worked too goddamn hard <laughs> over the last 13 years to get my meagre 11,500 followers. Honestly, I don't know how people get like quarter of a million followers in three months. How the hell do they manage it? <laughs> Are they interesting to watch or something? God damn it. going to considering I was considering vlogging or at least trying to vlog once a week because first off studio vlogs are very popular I love watching them it's pretty much all I watch on YouTube other than creepypastas um, and ghost adventures <laughs> and I figure like normally Are they buying followers? I don't know. I don't think so. I think a lot of them just have a lot of people on Instagram or other social media. So all of those people on social media follow them. Whereas I started on, I started doing classes. I didn't start on YouTube and go elsewhere like a lot of people. I started elsewhere and came to YouTube, but I was already on the social media elsewhere. So I've never built up the following of like Instagram and everything else. I've still only got four and a half thousand followers on Instagram. And it's not about it's not about the numbers. It's not about getting lots of numbers. It's just I, I look at 
the numbers and I'm like, you've been doing vlogs where basically all you do is call beauty products so, so cute and so, so nice. Nice is not a good word, okay? Stop using the word nice. Nice is what you say when you don't have anything nice to say, okay? Uh, there's all these people showing makeup nobody can afford to, to buy and handbags nobody can afford to buy but them. And saying how, how they just have to have it because it was so, so cute. And that's all they do. And somehow they've been on YouTube for like eight months and they've got four and a half thousand followers. And I'm like, you've got half as many followers as me. You've been here like ten minutes. <laughs> how? I've been between... Well, I hit 10,000 in 2006. And since then... Virtually every day, any time, or not every day, because I don't look at the numbers that often. But any time I do happen to look at the numbers, because you can't really miss them now, they're on the middle of your dashboard. Every time I log in, like I logged in today, minus 32 followers from yesterday. Which is overall, you know, you gain 100, you lose 50 bots. That happens all the time. But I do sometimes wonder how on earth I haven't at least made it to like... 20,000 for heaven's sake <laughs> oh oh well meh Butterfly, she's back. We haven't seen you for ages. You've been AWOL, girl. You've been AWOL. The younger girls who look up to girls who like models and the younger girls make, like makeup. But the if you look at the statistics on YouTube, the average age of people on YouTube is middle-aged women in America. That is the most of the demographic, is 25 to 50 middle-aged women in America. And that's not just my demographic, that's all over. Because I've spoken to some of the youngsters and said, you know, what's your average... Is, is it that you've got a lot of younger viewers? And they're like, no, I've got maybe three people my age and everybody else is like over 40 and living in America. <laughs> Are you doing something mainstream or niche? I think the problem is that we still don't have an art channel because there's no way people like, I mean, Bailey J does okay, but mostly she does okay because of her vlogs. Most people find her vlogs, then they follow her art channel. They don't find her art channel and then follow the vlogs. Moment of truth. I need, a, I need a scully moment. <laughs> Hands up if you know where that's from. Sully, sorry, not scully. Oh, I'm not talking about the super YouTubers. Like the, you know, graveyard girl. How many million is she up to now? You know. They either burn out or they fall way off their pedestals. I think Shane's pretty much the only big one that's still going and not in a scandal at the moment so, so far. But yeah, I thought, because normally I struggle with vlogs because I always think, well, I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting at home working. This is probably not interesting to anybody, even though I that's what I watch. Who on earth would watch this? Um, need to start doing Jeffree Star videos. I can't stand Jeffree Star. I'm sorry. <laughs> My unpopular opinion. 
Brad Mondo, now he's fabulous. I love Brad Mondo. He's got the art of throwing shade, but in such a nice way, you feel like he complimented you, down to a T. <laughs> Heron tortoise. Yeah, but there's tortoise and there's slug. And I'm currently in the slug area. Oh, I haven't, I haven't hemmed it yet. Look, it fits perfectly on one side. That's why you don't blog either because it's not you think it's not interesting. Yeah. Well I, I always think it's not interesting, but then I watch people who basically do the same as I do. You know, mini small. What does she do? She works from home and she paints a lot. By Bun. What does she do? She works from home and she paints a lot. <laughs> Holly Exley. What does she do? She works from home and she paints a lot. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe actually it's more interesting than I think it is because I would watch those people just just watching them paint without anything else, even without them talking, is more than enough. I really enjoy that. So I can't be the only one because they've got lots of followers. Right, so I'm not the only one who likes that sort of thing. But I also thought, you know, safety net and all that, to get myself past the thought of, well, what if it's not interesting, etc, etc. It's Covid. It's lockdown. Nobody cares! <laughs> everything is, is everything. Everything is boring. Everybody's life is boring. Everybody's vlogs are basically them sitting at home painting and stuff. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, Fran nerd, she, she makes me laugh so much. You know what really makes me laugh about Fran? <laughs> and it's ridiculous that it makes me laugh, but it just does. It must be, I think it must be a language thing. It must be something to do with what she would colloquially say in Brazilian. Is that her first language? What do they speak in Chile? I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm having a, I'm having a mental block. I know what they speak in Chile. I just can't get my brain to actually spew the words out. It must be a colloquialism from where she's from because <laughs> she calls everything this bastard. <laughs> I have to get I have to I have to go and go and iron this bastard. <laughs> I have to I have to finish this bastard. <laughs> she absolutely cracks me up doing it. <laughs> because she's not actually swearing. She, I don't think she means it in the way that you know like an I mean it's more of a common thing in America than it is here but I don't think she means it the way an English speaking person would speak. Portuguese, Spanish. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly, I can't remember what they speak in Chile. Could be Spanish. Could be Spanish. I know I got surprised the other day when I saw a, a video and she said, Ed's on a call because he was in the background. Oh, he's, he's on a call at the moment. He's on a conference call. And he was speaking perfect English. I've, I've been following her since about her third vlog and I have never ever heard him speak English. I've spe heard him speak fluently in several other language, including languages including Japanese. I've never heard him speak English. I had no idea he could even speak English. Because I, I actually thought when they said he was he was going to go and go to New York to, to study and I was like how's he going to do that if he doesn't speak English? And then suddenly he's on this conference call and he's got the most perfect English pronunciation you'd never even know he spoke a foreign language, let alone that it was his first language. I'm like, how? 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 <laughs> that was funny. I love that when you've been following somebody for years and you suddenly find out something completely new about them and you, 
completely changes your not misconceptions but preconceptions because they always speak Chilean Spanish thank you they always speak Spanish at home whenever she's talking to him they don't speak English I've heard them occasionally speak to each other in German And they even spoke to each other in Japanese at one point when they were in Tokyo. But I've never heard them speak English together. And there he is on this conference call speaking better English than I do. <laughs> How? How did we not know this? He's a man of many talents, apparently. You could start a channel just for your dream stories. You'll never run out of material. never run out of material not for me doing some stuff I enjoy vlogging the thing is I always think well <laughs> all I'm doing is repeatedly stopping and saying okay so for the last three hours I've been doing this and here's what I've been working on and now I'm going to make some food <laughs> because I only ever remember to vlog when I'm about to take a break to make some food <laughs> But I did try vlogging this week. I have I have tried picking it up again this week. Um, unfortunately, I'm committing the ultimate sin, apparently. The ultimate sin. I don't have a vlogging camera. I'm having to vlog on my phone. Because I no longer have any, have any camera equipment. <laughs> Everything died. I had my... I had my big camera that I used to use when I used to do pre-recorded videos. Um, and I was still using it for going out and about doing urban sketches. But the last time I took it out it would for the urban sketching thing last June, somewhere along the line, something happened to it and it no longer, it just corrupts video cards. It, it, I, there's something wrong with the reader that it just, video cards, no. It will record, but it corrupts them. So... And it's not the video cards, because the video cards work in other machines. So, I did think, next time I get a, a payment from either YouTube or Twitch, I might, might spend the 80-odd quid to get a digital camera that's got a flip screen. Because you can buy cheap ones. You don't have to have a Mark 7 G2000, whatever it is. Mini Smalls. I love Mini Smalls. I like listening to her talk. I really enjoy watching her paint. I enjoy, especially when she's, the, the ones she does where it's like paint with me for an hour and she talks while she paints and she talks you through what she's going to do and then she just talks about other stuff and all that kind of stuff. But the montages drive me insane. <laughs> montages in any video drive me insane. I, I don't like, because I listen to vlogs to listen to vlogs not to watch pretty montages with insane chill hop over the top not that mini small uses insane chill hop i actually quite like the music she uses um but yeah a lot of the i, I watch quite a few of the risd students like tiffany uh, tiffany wang and um cat creatures she's so adorable <laughs> she's just so cute and she's a design student, so it's something a bit different. It's not just watching people paint. She's doing stuff with textile and crochet and stuff. So I like watching the RISD vlogs, although there's not nearly enough of them. And of course, they're all at home now trying to get through their final projects. That must be a nightmare. I mean, it's hard enough doing a final project when you're at college trying to get through it when you're at home and all you really want to be doing is sitting on the couch watching Netflix and that must be really hard. Must take a lot of discipline. Unfortunately a lot of the people I really enjoy enjoy their vlogs like Fran kept her vlogs on YouTube but took everything else onto Patreon, which is great. Absolutely. She should get paid for her work. I'm totally for that. Yes, everybody artists should get paid for their work and you shouldn't have to keep giving things away for free. 
but a lot of people do it the other way around. They still put their art on YouTube, but their vlogs are private. Which, for some people, I mean, I totally understand by Bun's reasoning for doing that because she's got a kid now. If once you've got a family and you know you've got to protect their privacy, I totally get that. I've, I've got no problem with that at all. But you know, a lot of the younger ones, they start off on YouTube, they get a following, and then they go, right, I'm going to uh, Patreon now, and uh, I'm not doing vlogs anymore. I'm just going to put my art up here. I'm like, I didn't follow you for your art. <laughs> Followed you for your vlogs. <laughs> Four retrograde planets coming up. Oh, yeah. There's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. All sorts of crazy stuff. Pluto went retrograde last month. And then on the 12th, 13th and 14th this month... We've got Saturn, Jupiter and Venus. And then next month, we've got Mercury. <laughs> oh, hang on to your hats, guys. Hang on to your hats. OK, this is this is looking good. This is looking good. I'm, I'm happy with this so far. Now, if I want to put a pocket on the front to put my pen in or a pen loop or anything like that, I need to do it now. So, do I want to put a pen loop anywhere? And if so, where? I think I kind of do want to put a pen loop in. I mean, it happens every year. It's just that it doesn't normally happen in Capricorn and Aquarius. <laughs> And all together conjunct with Pluto. I mean, you know, it doesn't always happen that way. But they all happen to be together. And they're all zigzagging past each other, so. <sighs> Shall I just stick one of those in? <sighs> I really don't I reuse these things all the time. I could just stick one of these in here like that and be done with it, couldn't I? Maybe stick it a bit better than that. That fits that pen. could put a buttonhole and then put that through so only the elastic sticks out or I could actually make one out of elastic couldn't I and then I can still use this one somewhere else like in here okay plan the B elastic I've got elastic somewhere I don't know where but I've got elastic somewhere I think it's in my thing down here. Hi, Boo Boo. Hello. Oh, hi. Oh, and Miss Maddie as well. Hello. How are you doing? How are you doing, my love? Are you a good girl? Are you a good girl? Hi. Hello. Oh, and hello. Hello. Hi, Mr. Boo. Hi, kids. I don't think it's in here actually. It's in the one over there. Hang on. Ugh. Elastic. Where's the elastic, Miss Muddy? What did you do with it? Huh? Hi. Mind your bum. Whoops. Craft a lunch. Touch anything, something else falls over. Ugh. Mind your toes. Mind your toes, everybody. Here we go. There's a pre 
previous one I made. Plastic. That's what you need. I used to use this all the time, but it's heavy. Just keep taking things out of it and not putting them back in. Oh. Find your toes. Good boy. So this is a previous one that I made for my Hobonichi Techo many, many years ago. And I added pockets to this. See, this has even got stiffener in it. And I put a pen pocket there and I put a pen pocket there. It was quite handy having a pen pocket on the outside because you close the book up and you put pen in it, you know. You even had bookmarks on this one, cracking. <laughs> really went all out on this one. Extra elastic. Oh, that's right, because that one, that one went on the back thing and then that one went over the front there to hold it closed. Pretty impressive actually. It's even got a pocket on the back like a Hobonichi cover. I can't believe I made that. Well I can because it's it's not straight and it was obviously stitched by hand in its entirety. There is nothing on it that's sewn <laughs> on a machine. <laughs> so I didn't have a machine at the time. So I'm just wondering, should I just put a pocket on the front? Because I kind of like that pocket. I could even put it crisscross. Because I've got some offcut here that's crisscrossed. And I could actually put it on like that. And then it would have, you know, you could put your pens in it like that, see? A couple of highlighters. I'm going to start making vlogs but you get stuck on the good enough. I don't care about the good enough. I mean I do live live streams with no planning whatsoever so good enough is not really a, a thing. I just in, I do it because I enjoy doing it. Um, but vlogging it's just kind of you know it's you vlog once and that's it, you're done. <laughs> that's how my world works. Our pet's going to need therapy after COVID. They've all got used to their owners being home all the time. Oh, they're going to be so depressed. Poor babies. Well, mine aren't because I'm home all the time. <laughs> I think people are going to be working from home a lot. I think this is going to change how people work. Once they realise how much better it is and how everybody can get around faster and, you know, it's it's less congested and everything else, I think there'll be a lot of companies allowing people to work from home once they realise that people can be trusted to work from home. Do I want a pocket on the front? Do I want a pocket on the front? Or not? Do I want a pocket on the front? I guess I could put a pocket on the front and if I don't like it, I could take it off or just not use it. Right? I mean, there's that. it straight first off Double and fold it under. See, 
obviously not being able to find your pen is a good reason for having a pocket on the front of your journal, isn't it? Where the hell did it go? I literally had it in my hand just now. There. It's still in here. Huge amounts of money to save from leasing buildings and insurance, etc. Yeah. And the thing is, if people work from home, they don't even have to claim expenses and stuff from the company. They can do it on their own tax returns. You're going to do a tax return anyway. It's no biggie to just put any mileage you do at 40 pence a mile and, you know, £3 a week for your heating and lighting. I mean, because that's all you get. Okay. I think the easiest way to do it from here will be to make it equal. Let's just do it like this. And then add a little bit on for turning it. Okay. I don't know how long I want it to be, but that's probably long enough. I'm going to do it basically the same way as I did the other one, which is turn it under. Whoops, sorry baby. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to kick you. But you're, you're kind of lying on my step and I can't sew if you're lying on it. Let's see. There we go. I can't. You're you're sitting on my accelerator. I can't. I can't sew if you're sitting on my accelerator. Hi, boo boo. Okay. I think the easiest way to do it will be to actually let's tap tack it under. There we go. Oh, that's not going to work because I don't have a sewing needle. Can't do that. Okay, let's just stitch it then. Eh. Eh. A little tacky. A little sewy. That's better. Oh, I didn't need to do that. I'm going to double sew it anyway. Now I remember. Okay. This is the kind of pen that I usually use that is longer than all the other pens I use. So let's say it needs to be about to mark it because I'm just using this the lines of the actual fabric the, the stripes on the actual fabric to line it up it's 
See you, Rish. enjoy sewing. I really enjoy sewing. I've got all those big blocks of squares and I'm thinking about just turning it into a quilt <laughs> just because I can. Not even a quilt but like sew all the squares together and then back it with a like a sheet, a black sheet and then stitch it through. So it's not, it's a lightweight quilt, you know. <sighs> just can't be bothered with the whole getting wadding and stuff. I don't care. I don't get cold enough to need wadding. Okay, let's trim these off a bit shorter. So stuff doesn't get stuck on them. fingers and thumbs today, crikey. Okay. Should have done the sides first and done the top afterwards. Yep, gonna have to do that again, won't I? This is the things you learn as you're going along. I'm gonna have, so if I do it sides in, the top of my pocket is gonna have an ugly bit. Uh, we don't want ugly bits. So the top of the pocket, which is the bit that I didn't bother to back sew, so that should be nice and easy to pull out. Uh, I need to fold that in after everything else is tucked in. So it's nice and neat on the top of the pocket. Don't care about the bottom of the pocket. The bottom of the pocket doesn't matter. Oh, white thread on black material. This was one of my better ideas. Eh, ow. that one and stick that a bit. So this side I'm going to trim that corner off again, reduce the bulk. Oops. Probably should have done that before I glued it. Sure, there must be an easy well, easier way of doing this, but oh, whoever needed an easy way of doing anything, eh? It's far more fun, MacGyvering it. 
every time I move my foot off the pedal, she's back there. Oh, is this going to get all out of line if I do it like that? Let's move it over to the left, number seven. That's better. And then I can stow it there. Okay. Oops. Try that one again. Come on, do not do this to me. That stupid thing at the back is important. No, oh, stop it. It's bunching up. Now it's getting all caught up. Now it's all knotted. Gosh darn it! Who gave you permission to do that? Who said we should have a pocket? It does not like sewing that way around, so let's sew it this way around. Won't have that problem there. Number So much less painful. Hey Rach. My machine's very good, it doesn't break needles unless I'm stupid. And by stupid I mean, oh I left a pin in there. And then I managed to sew directly over it. How? How? I cannot hit a barn door with a truck. My hand-eye coordination is that bad. But how how come I can I can hit that tiny little needle point onto this tiny little thing here, this tiny little thing, every single time? How? How does that even work? I don't know. <sighs> At least I'm consistent. All the pockets. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't necessarily need pockets on this because I do have my little Delphonics DIYs. However, I do think it would be beneficial just to be able to chuck my pen in or whatever I'm using and just chuck it in the pocket and be done with it. As far as I'm aware, there is not currently any such thing as too many pockets. 
there's only I don't put this things in this pocket because it's got a zip <laughs> and if I put anything in that pocket it will just disappear in there and never be seen again but I don't think I, th I would rather have an empty pocket that I don't use than not have a pocket that I need I think that's what I mean that's what I'm trying to say I would I would much rather have an empty pocket and it'll sit flat and it'll look nice and I haven't done it before so it's one more of my 20 things in 2020 that I completely forgot about until literally just now in fact that's in my Hobonichi right there so I could have a look at that in a minute um, let's chop that bit off we don't need that bit there that's just adding bulk for the sake of it yep what number are we on number five so we're coming to the left I sometimes forget that I can take my foot off the accelerator I don't know why because I'm a really good driver but the minute I get behind a sewing machine I'm like oh that's really fast like, wait a minute take your foot off the pedal <laughs> never too many pockets well there is too many pockets if you've got one that you're not using but I would rather have too many pockets than too few too few is not an ideal situation too many leaves room to grow and gives you options This is the only bit of sewing I really detest. <laughs> Since I mentioned quilting, I've started thinking, my brain has reminded me of... Are you off? See you later. West Coast Dean. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, I'm suddenly reminded of cutting out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hexagons out of material and cardboard and then stitching them all onto the cardboard and then stitching them all to each other and at some point losing the will to live and thinking there must be an easier way of doing this. We all had to make a, a flower out of hexagons. And then we had to join it up with the person next to us. Till it made a quilt. And then, to add insult to injury, you had to go out, go through all the way through and take all the cardboard out. Right. What's the point of putting it in the first place then? You're just going to take it out. I never appreciated the finer points of quilting. I really want to do some embroidery. That's what I'm really itching to do is some embroidery. And I really need some fabric like this. This is perfect fabric for embroidery. However, not striped. Stripey fabric is not good for embroidery. I do not want to embroider. This would make my eyes go squiffy. I need some plain like this. Either black or white, but not both. And certainly not stripey. Well, I'm not both together and not stripey. But everybody's away on eBay at the moment. There's about three people still selling on eBay and they're in Taiwan or something. It takes 48 years to get to you. Okay, so now that's nice and neat. Now, when we fold it over this way, we won't have an ugly seam at the top. Let's just 
just mitre those corners off. To reduce the nib oak, like that, and fold that over. I have to go a bit further than that. So there. doesn't even want to come off. Where's my pen gone again now? Where's my other pen? I can't get the lid off this one. Uh -huh. There it is. It's very camouflaged on this desk. Lest we sew it on the wrong way up. Because you know I'd do that right. No, we want in the middle. Where's the middle one? Number seven. No, nope, that's to the left. Number five is in the middle. That's what we want. Okay, so forward, back, forward, back. I'm only finishing that edge because it's the top pocket. Hey Sue, what have you missed? You haven't missed a lot, much. I wasn't talking to you Sue, Sorry. shut up. I spent hours going, hey Siri, hey Siri, hey Siri, hey Siri. Hey, Siri. He just ignores me. I go, hi Sue. And he's like, yes, what can I do for you? One moment. Is there something else I can help with? No. Okay. <laughs> my Siri has an identity crisis. <laughs> He thinks his name's Sue. He's a boy named Sue. How do you do? My name is Sue. How do you do? I set my I set yours off. Oh. I like to set people's Alexas off because they are quite um, good at picking up voices. Unlike Siri, who just ignores you until you call him by another name, like, Hi Sue! Oh, he's, he's not playing now. So yeah, I was considering picking up a cheap vlogging camera. Because I'm vlogging on my phone and I don't like vlogging on my phone really. It's not ideal. Mostly because I film with my left hand, which means everything's upside down and backwards and inside out and all the buttons are on the wrong place. And, you know. Okay, done. Now, where do I want to put it? I think maybe on here, just maybe right in the middle. Is that the right way around? Yep. Maybe just right in the middle like that, or right in the middle, no, near the bottom in the middle. Just in case we put taller things in, because if we put pencil in, 
pencil will be a lot longer, won't it? At least until you sharpen it. So a pencil, yeah, that needs to be right near the bottom. I don't want to go too far down because I don't want to hit that seam and sew through eight layers of fabric. I'll tell you what, let's make that bit at the bottom a square. And then it won't look odd. Yes, that'll do. That'll do it. What am I making? Oh, sorry, Sue. I thought you'd gone and come back because you asked if you'd missed anything. Uh, I'm covering my Hobonichi Weeks because it's frog green. <laughs> It's not even frog green, it's puke green. Frog green would be all right. Puke green is a bit. Okay, here we go. Now, question. Do I want to do a fancy stitch down the side to cover the fact that that stitch is not in any way, shape or form straight? I'm thinking we might as well. <laughs> okay, so let's do, let's do a zigzag number nine. So that's gonna go that way. And it's going to go that way so that's going to be the middle it's going to go about there and i can hand finish it at the end or at the beginning whatever turn it on would be useful there we go Oops. really see this it's just I like I like the extra texture Yeah, I missed the... Oh, yeah, that's going to bug me. Down to the right. Down to the left. I need it to go down to the left first. Oops.
know where my clear nail varnish is? Hanging out with mine somewhere? Oh, I don't know. For those wondering, I did another layer of zigzag at the bottom because this zigzag is on the white and it just looked a bit odd being able to see it here but not the bottom so I put another layer on the black on the black it won't matter that it's it's just going to be an extra bit actually it's probably a good idea to have it double sewn at the bottom so that when you put your pens in it it doesn't have a hole through the bottom of the pocket on that end no. oh I had a moment of fear then <laughs> a moment of no don't tell me I put that on the wrong side I thought it needed to go there and then like no no it's okay because that folds in <sighs> okay it's okay Everything's okay. scissors need shot. <laughs> Must be nearly tea time. My tummy's rumbling. Ooh, 20 to 7. Yeah, nearly tea time. Marvellous. Marvellous, Marvin. One, two and a half. That should be the perfect size to fit. One, two and a half. Oh, it's even a little bit loose. It could even be a little bit tighter. Just a tiny bit, a tiny bit sort of there.
squat. <laughs> I'm not even on camera, am I? Sorry. Getting carried away. Nearly done. Nearly done. We're almost there. We're nearly done. We've almost done it. do that because it's a it's a proper knot I sewed it off at the ends I forgot don't need to do that on my own but I mind secure is good not I don't need to cut do that bit either because I Finish that one off too. Oh, that's so much easier than sewing your ends. All your retrograde planets you can't use your gift. Oof, yeah. August. It's going to be August before you can get back into anything, really. Because they're all they're all retrograde around Jupiter. So until Jupiter goes direct again, all bets are off. That's why I've not been doing any tarot readings or anything. I mean, I, I can do astrology. That's easy. Because that's science. But. Of applause. There should be a round of applause any time now. Look, it's cute. Look how cute. Look how freaking cute it is. Instead of puke green, it's cute. Cute. God damn it. I might even, to make it match my bag, I might. in there. Did I take it out earlier? Oh, I might put one of my little badges on there. 
a little um, Hobonichi. Oh, here it is. This is what I mean. Like one of them on there, like that, to match my other bag. But I'll hand sew that because it'll be much easier. And it's so much easier to hand sew these. In fact, if I cut that along that orange bit there, that will fit perfectly. I might put it at the top to cover up that ugly bit because that stitching is ugly and I can sew it down there but I'll hand sew it because it'll be a lot easier to just hand sew it on I might even just glue it on to be honest because we're lazy like that now what I need is what I need is 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 what I need was just here the other day where on earth did it go come on I know I didn't move it I didn't go oh I'll put that in a safe place I thought oh I'll leave that there so I know where it is okay so I know okay I'm coloring in with a sharpie but you know what it's going to look better because this is what's happening at the moment you see where the zigzags are on the black there's a line down the middle I don't like it so just on the black ones oh I need a thinner sharpie that's too thick where's my super thin sharpie there it is black that'll do that'll do it I'm not doing it all the way down I'm only doing it on the black ones but you can't even see it on the white anyway it doesn't matter but on the black it just looks a bit better without the line in it I don't want it to look it looks like oh I did a straight seam and then I wish I'd done a zigzag so I did a zigzag over the top and because I can't sew in a straight line, some of them are triangles and some of them are zigzags with lines through. And some of them are just zigzags because I didn't even manage to hit the line I was going for. So, in the interests of, let's at least make it look nice. Because I'm going to have to look at it, it's going to drive me insane if I don't. See how much better that looks on that side now? Than that side, see? See, much better. And it just takes two seconds with a sharpie. I mean, yeah, sure, I could have faffed around with changing my bobbin and working out what colour to use and everything else, but we all know where that would end up, don't we? Oh, you can see the blue in my hair now, look. It's, it's really, 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 really dark blue. It's blue-black, basically. And it will fade to black rather than blue. But it's super inky at the moment, and I really like it. Needed to get my inner goth out. There. 
So these are just single lines, so it doesn't, I'm not bothered about those. The single lines are fine. That's a double line though, because I didn't sew straight, so let's just have one line at a time. But the zigzags look much better if they're proper zigzags as opposed to drunken landscaping. Bless you, Miss Maddie. Oh, baby, your allergies are playing up again. There you go, that's much neater. What brand was the dye? It's the Live XXL, it's the only one that takes in my hair. Us redheads, we've got to use bulletproof colours, otherwise they just look like, they either go green, <laughs> Makeups. That's better. That looks much nicer. I like it without the line across the top. can put my Hogwarts badge across there. I like it further down. Or I could even put it at the bottom actually. That might look cute. In fact, if I stitched it down there and there and didn't bother putting anything else in, It could even be like a little clip thing. Do you know what I mean? For like paper clips and stuff. Or to put clip these things on that I use all the time. Always handy. That's a good idea. I'll do that. I kind of wish I'd put that on now and sewn it on with the zigzag. I wish I'd pinned it on and sewn it with the zigzag, but it'll be alright. I'll hand sew it, it'll be fine. I'm really happy with that, I think it's awesome. Uh, I'll put that up there. And I'll put my pins up there as well. And then I'll know where it all is. Ah, oh, I really need to invest in a hedgehog. Rusting veg and best hedgehog. I should put it in my Amazon basket so that the next time I put in an order I can actually pick it up. Typically I just ordered stuff last week. I bought ordered my my mouse and keyboard. Although I saved it all up or up, thinking oh I'll, I'll order it at the same time so there's only one delivery. It was like four different deliveries. <laughs> Because it came from different places after all that, so I like it. It's a little bit skewed, but that's okay. A little bit skewed is all right. I don't mind a little bit skewed. Perfecto Patronum. <laughs> it's the magic words. So, my, I was going to show you this, wasn't I? My 2020. So, 20 in 2020 is a challenge. So, this is the original list. And I'll remember where my pen is because I'll go, oh, there's my pen. <laughs> yes. Oh, look, 
lucky sevens above my desk. I've got a cute spindly little spider that if it was in a Disney, if it was in a Disney film, it would be a princess and it would have big fake eyelashes, but it's only got seven legs. So I nicknamed it seven and it wanders around between my bathroom and in here, but I've never seen it above my desk before. She's so pretty. Right, so the 20 and 2020, that's the original list. And this is what I've done because I've changed some of it. So rid your social media of 20 people who don't serve you. Do this every month. I actually already do that. I go through my, my Instagram list every month. Um, so instead, I've put unplug for 20 days. So I'm doing 20 days where I just switch off my internet, literally switch off my router for the whole day. So I can't go on the internet. Uh, I've already done two days. So actually, I think I've already done three days, but one of them was by accident because my internet was off. List 19 things you're thankful for in 2019 and post it somewhere to always see it. Well, I didn't post it, but I wrote it in my journal at the back of my 2019 journal. So that's done. Make a list of 12 skills you want to learn in 2020. One of my 12 skills that I wanted to learn was, sorry, I distracted myself because I just remembered that the pen I wrote this with, I just saw on my desk earlier and I was trying to remember where I put it. One of my squirrels woke up and distracted me. <laughs> um, so I've set it all up. So there's loads of these, like, uh, some of them I changed, like save $20 a week. I don't get $20 spare a week. There's nowhere I could do that. So I changed it to save five pounds at least 20 times. Because that's that's a hundred pounds, you know, that's halfway to a Nintendo Switch, right? Um, when you buy a want versus a need, put the same amount in savings. Again, I can't afford to do that. I have to save up for stuff I need as it is. So save up for purchases over £30 unless they're desperately needed. Because generally, I, I'm very bad at going, oh, I'll put it on the credit card and pay it back later. And I do that. I do pay it back. But I would be better off saving the money and then purchasing it when I can afford it as opposed to putting it on my credit card so I only put emergencies on my credit card um wear only 20 items of clothing for an entire month I only own about 20 items of clothing uh so I decided to make 20 mixed media paintings to sell instead um ironically I've made four mixed media paintings already and none of them are for sale <laughs> they're all either for me or their gifts I keep making stuff that I like so I don't sell it of course, at the moment, I can't send anything out in the post anyway, so it's moot. Eat only 20 foods for a month. I only eat about 20 foods anyway. I am not at all, not at all exciting about food. So I put find 20 new dog walks instead. I thought that would be fun. And then, of course, that went to hell and back in a handbasket. Um... redecorate a room while well, I'm I'm renting so I can't um so I decided to either re to deep clean a room or area my bedroom in here gets done quite regularly because I'm pretty much constantly doing it um but my bedroom hasn't been done since I moved in so it's like four years and it really could do with basically all the furniture being taken out cleaned hoovered and put back but I need somebody to help me with that. So I've got to wait till my, my parents can come up again. So my dad can come and give me a hand. Because he's the only one who can put my bed back together. So it actually works. Uh, so yeah, this is, I won't go through all of them. But then each one, I set it up. I haven't been filling this in. I should. I need to go through and fill this in. Um Clean your social media each month. I do that every month anyway, and I know I've done it every month so far, but I haven't done this month. So I can close off April and May. 
uh, 19 things you're thankful for in 2019. I did that and I wrote it in the back of my 2019 journal. 12 skills to learn in 2020. So those types of ones where it's 12 things you want to do or 20 books and so on. I haven't filled that out either. 19 things to be thankful for. I didn't end up writing that in there because, yeah, this is why I wrote it in pencil because I wasn't sure where I was going to write things and whether I needed to. Um, but I've got ideas for lists that I ha apparently haven't put in here. I've got them all written on post-it notes somewhere, but I didn't put them in here, apparently. Huh. This is my tracker, anyway. Um... 12 skills to learn in 2020. That was one of the ones I needed to write down. That's right. I was trying to work out whether I was going to list each one and have a page for each one, even if I didn't need to. Like, clean your social media each month. I don't need a page for that. Um, list 19 things. I don't need a page for that because I put it into my other book. 12 things to learn. So I've got a list. I wanted to learn how to use Procreate properly, which I've started doing. I did a whole thing on, a whole handout thing on Procreate yesterday. It took me hours <laughs> trying to train my brain to work in a different order. Um, trying to remember how to select and copy and paste into a new layer. I still haven't figured that one out. I'm trying to work out how to draw a shape and edit it and then how to go back in and select it again and edit it again if you need to. Yeah, all of that, so confusing. So that was a lot. <laughs> but five solid hours it took me yesterday, but it, it, I did it. Follow the fitness challenge in 2020. I did it for January, February and March. But April was a bust because of quarantine. And May is going to be a bust because of quarantine. So I figure if it's not my fault, I can't follow it. Then it's not my fault and I don't have to worry about it. 12 things you want to do. Uh, oh, one of them, the reason we got onto this is because one of them is sewing projects, 12 sewing projects. So I did my small Delphonics. I did my large Delphonics. And then I've just made a Hobonichi Weeks cover. So I'm getting there. I'm getting really far on the sewing projects. I thought I'd done something else as well, but I don't. I can't think offhand. I didn't make anything last month, but I did make something every month up until then, so I should have four, and I've only got three. It'll come to me. Take 20 photos of yourself. I've taken a photo every month, including this month. I've been putting them in the front of my my little passport journals to start the month so I put a picture of myself. Uh, use your pics in your journal. So I've been doing that. Plan a day out to a new place each month. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, January the car was off the road. And February, it snowed. And March, we went into quarantine. And April, we were in quarantine. And May, we're going to stay in quarantine. So maybe not every month. <laughs> maybe just in the summer months or something. I was going to find a new dog-friendly place to go every month. Like a, a museum or a, a, a pub. For a drink or something like that you know anywhere that's dog friendly so i could take the dogs with me because there's plenty of places around here that are dog friendly so save up for 30 pound plus items i've done that twice now 
saved up for it instead of just going, oh yeah, I'll buy that on the credit card. Save five pounds 20 times. I've only done it once so far. And then <laughs> COVID happened and all our incomes went out the window. Buy one, trash one. Oh, well, I've done that. I bought a new mouse because mine died. And I bought a new keyboard because mine died and both of them had gone in the trash. <laughs> Is that cheating? <laughs> It's because I tend to have graveyards, you see. I, like, I bought a new phone. I bought an iPhone 8 because my iPhone 5 was overheating and struggling and everything and it couldn't run half the apps I use and all sorts of problems. So I upgraded. I bought a second-hand iPhone 8 off Amazon Recon. Renew, sorry, not Recon, Renew. But I didn't recycle my iPhone 5, even though I can't actually use it. And I've still got my Note 3 that I had before my iPhone 5. Because I haven't recycled that either. <laughs> ah. I don't get rid of things in a timely manner, even when they're trash. For instance, I still have a box over there. One of the items in it is the keyboard that I had before the keyboard that I just broke. Yeah, because keyboards on average last me about two and a half years and then that's it, they're dead. So I've got to get better at the whole, not just putting things in boxes, but also taking them out to the trash. But it's not as simple as just putting it in the bin because it's not recyclable, so it needs to go up to the tip. So I've got to have the car. And every time I think, oh, I'll go and do that because I've got the car, the car won't start, so I don't actually get there. You have your original phones. You need to update your phone. Just wait more, till more summer weather comes. I've never had a new phone. I tell a lie. I had a new phone. The very first phone I had was the Nokia... 1110 it was huge it was like a house brick it was the size of a house brick and that was in 1992 my dad got one got them for work and he got me one and ever since then i've had second hand phones for a while hey for a while i was really lucky because a friend of mine used to have to buy lots of different phones so that he knew how to use them for work because he's a developer so he'd buy loads of phones and write them off to expenses and when they didn't need them anymore or they got replaced or whatever, he'd just get rid of them. He'd just put them in his, put them in his um, drawer and forget about them until I used to ring him up and go, I don't suppose you've got a spare phone. <laughs> he'd be like, well, what have you got now? And he'd upgrade me a couple. <laughs> Bless him. But he doesn't, uh, he doesn't do that anymore, so... I used to pay pay him for them. He didn't just give me them. I used to buy I used to buy them off him. Um, donate trash sell each month. I did that in January, and I did it in February, but I haven't been able to do it in March or April because of quarantine. send out racks can't do it can't go to the post office <sighs> I like this this works really well I don't even mind that I didn't put a strap on it I'm not even because it's so tiny I'm not really bothered that it doesn't have a clip because I tend to put those big bulldog clips on everything anyway you try and recycle your old, old phones when you get a new one. Well, the thing is, I don't get a new phone or a replacement phone. I've never had a new phone. But I don't get a replacement phone until the other one dies. So it's not worth selling. The iPhone 5 I had. The 5S, sorry. Well, I had a 5, 
which didn't last very long. It only lasted about six months, but I only paid 20 quid for it, so I don't, you can't really complain. Um, the iPhone 5S that I had, I bought for £40 locally. It cost me £20 to get a new microphone put in it because it, the microphone didn't work. Obviously, otherwise you wouldn't replace it, would you? Um, so for £60, I got an iPhone 5S that lasted me a year. Um, it still works. It's just that the battery's not very good and the sound quality isn't good and the the camera quality isn't good because I was using it for vlogging again. But I can still use it for like as an iPod. Um, but this one is so good. I don't really need to because it's, you know, this... I mean, I've been using this on and off all day. It's seven o'clock now and it's at 84%. And I spent a good hour and a half this morning playing Words with Friends and um, Animal Crossing. And then I was watching YouTube videos, not YouTube, um, listening to podcasts on it. And it's still at 84%. So the battery on this is phenomenal. Yeah, you can do that. You can sell it back if you've got the... Like, at some point, it would be useful to get a phone on contract. So I get a new phone. So every two years, 18 months or so, they give me a new phone on contract and I can re-hand re in the old one for recycling or, you know, sell it back or whatever. Trade it in, like you do with cars. That's what they usually do here, is you trade in your old phone, you get a new one. Um... But I only pay £20 a month for my contract at the moment and it's SIM because it's SIM only. It works out cheaper to spend two, the 280 quid on this, which will last me a good couple of years. <laughs> so if I'm going to spend that ridiculous amount of money on something it's going to be a new laptop not a phone i don't mind spending a couple hundred pound on a phone i'd have to spend that on a new samsung i don't have any problem spending 300 pound on a second hand iphone but no if i'm going to spend five six hundred pound on something no i'm gonna i'm gonna upgrade my macbook next and get one with the metal um, graphics because OpenGL isn't supported anymore so it's rapidly becoming just a machine to type in Word on <laughs> and play Diablo 2 and soon it won't even be for that because Diablo 2 is going onto my netbook where I can have my mods gaming is still the only thing in my opinion, where Microsoft is superior. I don't understand why, because MacBook, Mac is, uh, Apple is Linux based. Most people who write games write on a Linux machine. You'd think it would work better, but no. Anyway, tidying up my desk, so it must be time to stop. Cause I'm hungry, I need our dinner. I'm very happy with my Hobonichi Weeks cover. I have to say, if you're going to do this, it helps to have a pattern, a regular pattern. Like this is a, I think it's one centimetre, is it one centimetre or half inch? It's half inch stripes which makes it much easier to work out what's what's what and how to line things up. Although you wouldn't think so with how straight this is. It's not straight, look. But I don't care. I like it. Okay, thanks for joining me, guys. I'm going to call it a night there. Go and have some food. My poppy is huffing at me. It's been too long, apparently. I'm going to try. New iPhone is eight 
800 to 1,000 US dollars. Yeah, the problem is 800 to 1,000 US dollars is about 650 to 850 UK. But our iPhones are 800 to 1,000 pounds. So they're actually more expensive than yours. Grr. I refuse to buy new anyway. There's plenty of people buying new. I'd rather have recycled. And this was an Amazon renewed, so it's got a, year's, a year and a half's warranty anyway. It's got an 18 month warranty, so. Right, have fun guys. See you again next week probably. But I might do a vlog or a something in between. I might do a non-live in between. Maybe. Possibly. <laughs> but first, I'm going to go and eat food and kill orcs and snuggle my puppy. And not necessarily in that order. Bye.